Hello there guys. Welcome back to my studio. Um, I hope you all are having a good weekend and uh, I have some another project for you guys today. So first little show and tell. Um, if you watched the previous videos you saw where I started this collage roll but I had some bigger stiffer pieces that wouldn't roll up very well. So I, this is the same masking paper that I'm using um, in this roll. It's the same, but it's just a, a larger size. I think this is the nine inch one. Um, and again, it's at the hardware store. I usually find it at Ace Hardware, depending on where you are. And it's called masking paper and it's non-adhesive. It's literally just the paper that a painter would take with, with painter's tape and put down before they worked on the house. So, but then I've been able to take some of these. These are some old jelly prints actually from an open house at Whimsadoodle last year that I found when I was cleaning the other day and I didn't want to throw them away. So I glued them all down and then added some drywall tape. I just started with some marker. So I'll just keep adding onto this and this will be another collage piece. Again, when you look at it as a piece, it looks a little crazy, but if I take my little viewfinder and I just start looking around, like I really love this, this circle shape. So I'm sure at some point I'll cut that out, but just another way to use your scraps. So if you haven't seen where I do the collage roll, just go back a couple videos, maybe two before this, and you'll see where I make this start this collage roll and, and see what I make out of it, make it, what I make from it. So today I wanted to show you, speaking of collage, another way to make some collage papers that are your own. And I personally love coffee and, and tea staining papers. And I do have a large collection of them, but the one thing I find is sometimes in the, I'm in the studio and those of you who know my art, I work with a lot of bright colors, but sometimes when I'm doing collage, I really need something that's a little more neutral that I can kind of slip behind all the crazy colors because I don't need to add another color to it. And so I find myself looking for something because I don't keep a lot of browns and grays around here. So I go looking for something and then I don't have it. And although tea and coffee staining is great, it takes a little bit of time. And I feel like once I've invested in it, I need to do a whole bunch at a time. So it's not something that I would just make really quick and have just one sheet of. So I found this way of making these papers that look like they're coffee or tea stained, but they're not. So the other thing I like is, you know, coffee and tea, obviously you're going to get lots of browns, but I've always wanted other shades. So if I could find some grays, maybe even like this light cream color gray, but it has a little undertone of brown in it. So we are going to make these today. And then I'm going to show you in order to make them into collage pages, I will usually take them and stamp them. Because again, then when I need something, I can just come grab a piece of this and add it and it's all ready to go. So, but Mary, how do you make those? I'm glad you asked. Actually using distress oxides. So you can make them in any color that you have. But like I said, the purpose for these for me is to have something that's a little more neutral, but still has some texture. Because if you look at these, they still have interesting spots on them. So it's not just a gray piece of paper. There's some interest there. And so I don't always stamp on them. That's just one of the options. Some of this I may just keep. Like I love that section right there with those little splatters. So that's why I'm picking mostly browns and grays. I do have the ice spruce, but that tends to lead a little, it leans a little more to the gray side anyway. Um, so we are going to make some of those papers today using your oxides. So like I said, any color oxide you have, you can make these papers. 
So if you only have blues and pinks, make some blue and pink paper. You don't have to buy something. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So papers I'm going to use, I have some book pages because again, that's just another layer. These book pages are not from a really old book. This is a dictionary page, and I would say it's maybe a 10 year old book. I got it at a used bookstore or, or somewhere, you know, super cheap. Um, but it's not an old book page. I say that because old book pages tend to absorb liquid differently. They tend to be a little more fragile, so they may not hold up as well to the process that we're doing. So if you have a newer book, I mean, these are super white, but they won't be because we'll be dipping them in the oxides. I have never tried this on black paper before, but when I was digging out the pile of paper, I found some, it's a little thicker than printer weight paper. So maybe the 30 to 40 pounds, um, but I've never tried printing on the black. So it'll be interesting like with the grays to see what it looks like, or it may be a complete flop. We'll find out. And then this is just printer paper. So the, I think it's 26 pounds, 28 pounds, something, you know, the cheap stuff that you buy for your printer. And then this is mixed media paper. I believe it's around 90 pounds. So it doesn't matter what you use. Just try everything. If you have some tissue laying around, I didn't have any white tissue or light colored tissue. Mine is all colored now. Apparently I've used up all my white um, or else I would have used that. So, but feel free to grab whatever papers. The other thing I'm gonna grab real quick, if you still have them, is years and years ago, Distress and Dina Wakely, maybe some of the other Ranger designers, I'm not sure, but I only have Dina's and the Tim's Distress were mica sprays. So if you have these, go ahead and grab them and we'll use them. If you don't have them, don't worry. Um, it's just a little extra and it's one of those things that I've had for a while and I don't necessarily use as much as I should probably. So that's why I thought I would add them in. They're no longer available. They've been discontinued. So don't go looking for them. But if you have them or if you have um, some watercolors have mica powder, you could use that too. Um, or you could always just stencil with some gold or silver paint when you're all done if you want a little bit of sparkle on it. It's up to you. So we are going to start. I'll just start with the, the one closest vintage photo. So you'll need your oxide. You'll also need a spray bottle of water. And I'm working on my glass mat, so I'll apologize for the glare. That's my overhead light. Um, I don't normally film on the glass mat because of the glare, but this process works best on either a glass. If you have a piece of plexiglass, it works better on a slick, hard surface. Um, I've tried it on a jelly plate and the jelly plate and the oxides don't always react the way I want them to. So it's not as reliable of an outcome. So that's why I just keep using my, my glass mat. So if you have one, just grab it. So I just kind of smush some color on and then I'm going to hit it with my spray and you're going to get it pretty wet and get the whole thing wet. And then I'm going to start with one of these book pages and I'm just going to come in and kind of pick it and move it around, trying to get most of the area covered and pick up as much of the ink as I can. And then I'm going to let that dry. So it's not super impressive right now, but I'll let that one dry. Now, some of the lighter colors like the pumice, I'll actually do multiple coats because it doesn't always show the best the first time around. If there's a tiny bit left, just wipe it up or grab a scrap piece of paper. Um, this antique linen, I don't, 
I don't know if I'm going to use. It wasn't my favorite. So, it's very light. Um, I almost feel like I could use a cream sheet of paper, so I may not use that one today. But let's go to the ice spruce, because I know I like this one. So, ice spruce is kind of a grayish, greenish blue color. Um, if you think of a spruce pine tree, that's pretty much what it is. And let's go ahead. This is just the copy weight paper. So you can see it is sinking through um, because I get that ink pretty wet. But once they dry, it's not that big of a deal. Again, I'm trying to pick up as much as I possibly can. And that one's very cool. It looks like clouds on a stormy day. But just all of that variation where, you know, sometimes it gets hit with the color twice, sometimes only once. Of course, you want to have some place to let these dry. They dry pretty quick. Um, let's go ahead and try the black. So the black, I think I want to try this pumice on the black. It's a very light gray. Almost like a concrete color. Now, if you don't have the ink pads and you have sprays, you could do this with your Distress Oxide sprays, too. I picked to use my ink pads because I don't use them as frequently. I do use my sprays more often. So I'm looking for ways to use my ink pads. This paper is not very absorbent but I think I'm still going to get some, there's some cool texture on there. I have to find another place for this one to dry. I'm just pulling out the drawers next to me and laying them on top. <laughs> um, so let's keep that, that ice spruces on there and I'm just going to try to pick up whatever I can with a sheet of uh, printer paper. You can layer colors too. So, I mean, that there's still a huge amount of ink on there. And this was the pumice stone. So, I still have some ink over here that started to dry, and I'm just wondering if I can get any more of it in this corner. There drag it around. I even picked up a little bit of the paint that was still left on my mat. I want to tell you that I scrubbed this glass mat today because it had gloss sprays all over it and I knew that once I started inking it would probably pick them up so I actually cleaned something today. All right I'm moving on to hickory smoke. Darker gray I'm going to try it again on the black paper just because I'm interested to see what happens with a different color. I only had three or four sheets of this. I, I don't even know where it came from. Um, I'm sure it's been in my paper stash forever, but I just don't know where I got it from or why I have it. It certainly wasn't a scrapbooking paper. It's not a bookmaking paper, so I'm not sure. Again, subtle, um, and uh, these black ones I might actually come back and try doing a second coat on just to see what happens. So let me grab a book page and I'm going to try to use up this ink that's left. On the thinner paper I find it's hard to tell the effect that you're getting because that looks kind of like nothing right now, but once it starts drying it usually starts to look better. So, we haven't done frayed burlap yet. So 
So obviously very brown, a very warm brown. And let's try this mixed media paper. So this is the paper that's around 90 pounds, a little thicker. It's also, I believe nine by 11. So it's a little larger than the printer paper. And these are, these brown colors are the ones that made me think of it as a coffee or a tea staining. I'm trying to get some along that edge. And like I said, I'm going to come back and we'll add some more colors to these. And then I think I, yeah, I started with vintage photos. So we've gone through, I'll do antique linen. I'll give it a second chance. Maybe I'll try it on a book page, see if I like it better there. I think because it, to my eye it reads as yellow, um, which I'm not really into like a pastel yellow. If I'm going to use yellow, I want to use like a bright lemon. So we'll see what that one ends up looking like. And let's use up what we have. Mixed with the spruce, it looks pretty good. So we are going to come back. This is the first one I did with the vintage photo. This um, dictionary page is so thin that it's gone through to the other side. So I don't, I think I printed, I think I inked on this side, but you can kind of pick and choose. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add a little bit more of the vintage photo, which is the same color I used originally. By the way, if you hear whining, both of the dogs are in the studio with me. Rosa is licking my foot right now and Puna is sitting behind me whining. So if you hear whining, that's why. So I'm going to grab the Distress Mica Spray. This one is Tarnish Brass. It has the little ball in it, so I know I have to mix it up. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with my water first so it's already starting to move around and then I'm going to add just a little bit of that mica spray and now we're going to dip back in. So again, I like that, how it, it's not a solid color. It just picks up here and there. Some areas will be darker. It, right now it almost looks like I spilt my coffee on it. Sometimes I like the cleanup sheets better. It's just like the gel plate. Sometimes my ghost prints are my favorites. All right, so next we went to pumice stone. So again, I'll add just a little bit. So the second time through, I'm adding a little bit less ink. Why? Eh, I don't know, because I felt like it. Um, and I don't have any silver mica, but I do have this lapis, which is by Dina. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe possibly add a little bit of that. And then I had this on one of the black sheets. So that's the pumice, one layer. You can see as it dries and it starts to get that chalky finish. Looks pretty cool. So now I'm just going to add a little bit more here and there. Just to build up those layers. Make it a little more interesting. I like that drip thing that's happening right there. 
I will say on the black, I can't really see the mica spray. So I'm wondering if I just splatter it on instead of mixing it with the ink. And it looks a little brighter blue. Um, it doesn't look so much on the camera, but it's a brighter blue. But I do know that as it dries, it'll lighten up a little. So we'll see what that looks like. Now I also have pumice here. But I think I kind of like that one the way it is. Pumice is a really, really light gray color. And then this was our ice spruce. It's still kind of damp, but I have, I'm actually kind of happy with this one because I like all the tones, but I have the micro spray in evergreen. So I wonder if I grab a stencil and try to spray some through. just grab the first stencil I found. Of course, I haven't used these in so long. I'm sure. Alright, so. Just give it a good shake. Sorry. Sometimes if your sprays don't spray right away, if you just give them a better shake. But these micas were... So, stencil's not going to work. The micas were well known for clogging the tube because of the mica powder that's in them. So we'll just add some splatter to this one too. And you can see where the paper's still pretty wet because it's sinking in. So we'll see how that ends up looking. All right. This one was frayed burlap, which is not awful. I wonder if I can get this is antique bronze distress. Let's see if I can get this one to spray. Oh, I already see the nozzles full. <laughs> oh, look. Here we go. And of course, can't waste that mica, so let's flip it over on something else. Remember, anytime you use a stencil, you're going to have product left on the stencil, and there's no reason to waste it. So look, I already have some mica on there. And then, this was a cleanup sheet. This was the antique linen. This one was hickory smoke. So I don't know if I'm crazy about the black paper. Maybe once I cut, you know, a strip of it or something. Because sometimes I do want something that's black, but not completely black. So, like I said, you can keep building. Um, you can add as many layers as you want. You can mix colors. So let's try this antique linen and try adding another color to it to see if I would like it better. I'm actually going to grab Salty Ocean. I know I said I wanted neutrals, but I just want to try something different over that antique linen to see if I can spruce it up at all. I like that. So, for me, there's the secret. 
can't have antique linen just by itself. I have to have some other color with it. And still, that's a lot more neutral than my usual because I'm using heavy body bright paints. So this could still read as a neutral. I don't know, I really like that one. <laughs> Maybe I should just keep spraying my stencils with mica. All that glittery. That was a cleanup sheet. So the ones that I've done are still drying. So we're just gonna put those to the side, let them dry. Oh, let me show you this one. So this is the, the ice spruce with the green mica and see how it, it bled out, but the mica is still sitting in the center. So I'll try to bring it closer. My camera doesn't always focus when I bring it closer. So if it just got fuzzy, I'm sorry. All right, so the ones that I was just doing are still too wet, but the ones I showed you at the beginning are not. So let's work on those. So like I said, one idea is to, stand, to stamp. And this is just a stamp from Dina. It is called, let me pull it out. This one is called Funky Journal Shapes. Um, it's a couple years old. So if you don't have it, it might be hard to find. But it doesn't matter if you don't have this one. It's just a matter of finding a stamp that you like, that you think you would use in your collage, and then creating a sheet with that. And then this was, I believe, ice spruce. And then I used archival stamp pad in watering can. So it's not quite black, so it, it does blend in a little bit more with the background and doesn't stand out as much, and that's what I was going for. If you want something that stands out, of course, you can go straight to the black. So let's start on this one. So I had grabbed my coffee archival, and I'm going to grab some of what I call texture stamps. These are from Paper Bag Studio, which is no longer in existence. But any sort of stamp you have that has a pattern on it, that isn't a particular thing. So it's not a face, it's not a flower. These are just like mark making stamps. That one's hard to see. Um, so these are just for mark making. I usually do not use a block when I do these because I am just trying to get little bits and pieces. And again, I'm using the coffee so that it kind of will blend in a little bit more with the background and, and kind of keep the same color story going. Because as I work through my collage and I want something brown, I don't want something brown that has blue ink on it or black ink on it. So to me, keeping the, the same color family makes it a little easier when you're looking for a neutral. Because even though this is going to be busy with all these marks on it, it's still going to look more like a neutral because of the colors. And you can see I'm very particular about my stamping. Create a couple ghost images. I do love this one. It's one of my favorites. Because again, remember, I am never going to use this whole sheet. I'm going to tear a piece out that's going to go underneath of some bright hot pink flower or something. And I just need some neutral, something neutral behind it to, to soften it. That's what I'm looking to use these for. And again, if you don't have mark making stamps, you could do this on your own and make your own marks, whatever they may be. So to me, that one's done and I'm 
ready to put it to the side and move on to another one. So I'm going to grab this one. This one was the, I believe this was pumice. And this was just one layer. But remember, I remember I liked that part there, so I know I'm not going to stamp there. So I'm going to grab my watering can stamp pad. And again, go ahead and come in with my stamps. Reminding myself to avoid that little area. You obviously can take more time to do this if you want, but. I find if I sit here and think about it, it takes way too long. So, there's another one done. Let's do one more. Let's do this brown one. Um, and I'm going to break the rule. But wait, there's no rules. Um, I'm going to break what I told you I did. And let's try some black because I want you to see how different it is. So I have this very brown background, and if I come in with black, look how different that is than this one. So now you can kind of see how this still reads as a neutral, even though it has all that busyness, where now I'm introducing another color. I really like these lines. I could just draw a bunch of lines, but this is so much faster. I was so sad when I found out this company wasn't going to make stamps anymore. Because they, so these mark making stamps, they're, you can see they're kind of cut in odd shapes because they used to come on an 8x10 sheet of rubber, all one piece. So then I would stick them on the foam backing and then cut them out myself. So that's why there are all these odd shapes. Not like when you would normally buy a stamp set and it would be nice and trimmed and fussy cut around. But I have two or three sets of these and I have always loved them. So if you ever happen to see them somewhere on eBay or Etsy or somebody's getting rid of them, pick them up because they do just make mark making a lot faster. Since I know you all just jumped on Etsy, the name of the company again is Paper Bag Studios that produce these stamps. I know you're already looking for them. So, so again, just look at the difference. Two brown pages, but one with brown ink, one with black ink. It's not that one is better than the other. It depends on what your intention is and how you want to use your collage pages. So this one obviously is a little more dramatic. This one's a little more subtle. And then here's the other ones in the gray family. So yeah, so I would, I mean, I would just tear out a little corner here, maybe stick it behind. Um, you know, if you're using like one of these chips and you want to highlight it so it doesn't blend in the background, just cut a little piece that's slightly bigger then your chipboard and use that as your border. Those are the kinds of things I use it for. 
but then this is another way that when you go in your studio and you think, oh, I don't want to do anything. I don't feel, I don't know what to make. I don't know what to do. I don't just grab your ink pads and make some papers. That's why I have so many of them because I do have a rule that I need to come in my studio and I need to do something, but it's not always something that I show you guys. Well, <laughs> until now, <laughs> now that we're in quarantine, I show you everything that I do. Um, but before that, I just, you know, this isn't finished art. This isn't something that I would normally have posted on Instagram or Facebook or, um, you would have seen it eventually in my collage book, but now you know how it gets there. So whenever you're feeling like, oh, I'm not motivated to create, this is just another idea of something to do. It keeps you busy. You can have Netflix or whatever on while you're while you're working because it doesn't require a lot of attention and you can make a whole pile of pages and be ready when you are motivated to create so I hope you all have a great week I will talk to you again soon and happy arting <music>